Welcome to the National Bowling Academy. My name is Eric Vermilia, and today I'm joined by Scott Pohl, multiple time Eagle winner, multiple time Team USA member, heck of a nice guy, and also the owner of On Track Pro Shop here inside Cedar Bell Lanes in Egan, Minnesota. Scott, today I want to talk to you a little bit about the bowling fit. Let's say a person just walks into the pro shop here, introduces themselves. What do you go about in order to fit them into a ball for the first time? What are you looking for? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so a first time bowler, what I'm really wanting to get out of them is number one, you know, what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, how often do they bowl and what skill level they're at. Of course. And a lot of the time we need to get information from them and them tell it to us. Mm -hmm. And then we go from there. If they have a bowling ball already, how long they've bowled, you know, where they like to be, what bowling center, things like that. Perfect, yeah, the environment makes a big difference the there. Environment, exactly. Mm -hmm. So along those lines, let's say you're, uh, you know, a customer walks in the door, they've been bowling for 30, 40 years. You know, a lot's changed in, in fitting over over time. Um, you know, let's say they bring in their, their resin ball they've had for three or four years. What, do you, what are you looking for? What are you, what are you asking them about? And what are you looking to do with that bowler? For sure, I'm looking at, uh, number one, the fit. Mm -hmm. You know, if the fit is matching their style of play. And there's lots of things to look forward to. We'll talk more about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I still am unclear as to what they're doing or what they're saying, I definitely get them out on the lanes and watch them throw some balls. All right, very good. So let me uh, go a little different direction here. Um, so the, the current state of the game, the modern game, if you will, um, quite a bit's changed with uh, both bowling ball technology, fitting techniques, oil patterns, lane conditions, all that sort of stuff over the years. I know back in the urethane days when uh, we all first kind of started, that the way you approach the game, the way you fit, um, quite a bit different than now. Can you speak a little bit about that? Absolutely. The urethane days, uh, you know, which was up until 1992 before resin came out, uh, the fit was very simple. It was very uh, oriented towards how much can I do to this ball? Mm -hmm. How much force can I put on the ball? And uh, it wasn't so much of now the modern fit is a relaxed grip. And that's just evolved over time. Very much. Yeah, I know back in the, the urethane days, it was a lot about getting the hand as stretched as you possibly could, getting the, the fingers pitched back to, to really lift up on the ball. Exactly. And create as much you know upward yep. lift force to make the ball slow down so you can create hook. If you think of it, you know, think of like a Mark Roth. Mm -hmm. You know, he was the type that had that the old, old fit. The old school the fit. The old school of, fit. Yes. Of really hitting up on the ball exactly. and really trying to make it hook. Yes. But So now you speak of the, the more relaxed modern fit. Mm -hmm. um, Talk a little bit about that and a little bit about uh, what it creates on the, on the lanes sure. and the differences it makes. It's happened uh, twofold in my opinion. It's uh, bowling balls have created this, lane conditions, and uh, the fit. The fit, today's modern fit, is more relaxed in the thumb and it's more getting it off my hand smooth on the lane and seeing what it does down at the end of the pattern, more so than early on the pattern where it was with the urethane days. Very much, getting the, getting the strong, powerful, uh, reactive resin uh, you know, bombs, if you will, down the lane to do their damage there and not so much in the front we part like, of the lane. We like to say you know, it's more letting the ball do it instead mm -hmm. of the bowler do it so much anymore. Very much. So we've, we've got some balls here. So you know, as we said back in the day, it was about getting the, the fingers pitched back the thumb, the thumb back and the hand as stretched as possible. Um, what specifically now are we doing differently with the span wise? Is it differently? Shortening? Span is definitely a lot shorter. Okay. More relaxed, uh, you know, just less grip pressure on the hand. You know, when it was longer uh, years ago, we had more stress, mm -hmm. more stress on the hand and more effort. So now we're trying to create more relaxation with the hand, the shoulder, which gives typically better timing. Perfect. Okay, so as the, the hand gets more relaxed, it's easier to hang on to the ball. Probably easier to repeat shots also, I would absolutely, imagine. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's a big thing there. And then also uh, just you know the injury factor. I know back in the day you saw a lot of guys with, with torn tendons and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Probably not as much nowadays, correct? Not as much. Uh, if things are happening correctly and you're getting a good fit to start with, it really isn't happening as much. I mean, you're seeing youth players now go bowl national events and play four, five, six, seven days in a row. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, back in the day of the urethane days, if we bowled four, five, six, seven days in a row, we need time off. Well, I know some of us still need that time off anyways, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. all right, so let's walk into another uh, kind of cool new technology that's been around for a few years now. Um, and I know has definitely made a difference as far as the, uh, the thumb and the wear and tear on the thumb. You know, again, you go back to Mark Roth. I know back in the day, you used to watch him on TV and he'd have, you know, new skin and glue just, you know, 
covering his thumb because it was just screwed into that round hole that he had drilled. Mm -hmm. You know, nowadays we have, you know, much more advanced uh, drilling techniques to oval the thumb to fit your hand properly and then mm -hmm. also an interchangeable thumb system right. to where you can just simply drill the one thumb and swap it in and out of your balls. If you want to talk about the systems and kind of who it's uh, designed sure, for. Sure, sure. You know, it's designed for all players. Mm -hmm. There really is no one style of type of player. Today it's, it's definitely oriented if you live in a climate per se where we live in the Minnesota area, you know, climate changes, our hands change, uh, our thumb sizes are different all the time. Very much. Um, you know, if you live in San Diego, well, your hand isn't going to change, but if you're playing a lot, your hand will change. So what the interchangeable system allows is for you to just have multiple inserts in the ball. You can have multiple sizes, you can have multiple angles of the thumb if things are happening a certain way. Sure. So it really allows the bowler to have what we're talking about, more of that modern fit, relaxed feel. That's great. So basically, instead of having to swap tape in and out constantly, you know, if you, again, in Minnesota, you bowl in the summer versus when you bowl and it's 20 below out in the winter, your thumb is definitely not the same size. So being able just to take the same, the same fit from ball to ball. Right. And then also have multiple thumbs of different sizes, different angles, different pitches. Mm -hmm. Huge tool for uh, both the competitive bowler as well as probably just the league bowler. And, and it's so simple as just put in, twist it. And it's very simple for the pro shop person to make one, two, three, however many you need. For a different example for you, um, let's say a, a player walks in, they're uh, you know, a, a college bowler, uh, competitive, younger bowler, they bowl a lot of tournaments, they get a lot of games and do a lot of practicing. What kind of, what would you be looking for in their fit and what might you point them more towards in the fitting to maximize their potential? Yes, uh, that's a really good question. I would definitely point them in the direction of to what we say now is more the modern fit. Okay. Um, you know, the youth and the collegiate players, it's a different game mm -hmm. from 15, 10 years ago. Absolutely. It's all about what we're talking about with that modern fit, relaxed hand, get it off my thumb nice and clean, mm -hmm. less effort, a little more forward in the pitch per se, a yep. little more reverse in the fingers. Mm -hmm. um, there are those situations where it's not available with sure. certain hands. Mm -hmm. You know, not, it's not an absolute rule. But if it's possible, it's definitely recommended. And that's something you really can't stress enough. Um, you know, even though there is the, a modern fit and kind of a blueprint to go by, every hand certainly is different. Absolutely. I mean, if you just you look at my hand, for example, it's it's thinner, it's pretty flexible, um, still a little bit on the younger side. I like to tell myself. <laughs> Um, your hand, conversely, definitely a little bit uh, more meat on it, not yep. quite the flexibility you I used have to have. The uh, the thick uh, Midwest hand, if you will. Uh, and for me, I, I, I use a little bit of the modern fit, but I can't go as extreme as, let's say, someone who's very flexible and young and has that going for them. Very much. So definitely why it's important to go see you know a knowledgeable, experienced pro shop guy. Absolutely. But so let's even go a, a step further back. Let's say uh, someone walks into your shop, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13 year old just getting into the game um you know what are you looking for with with a fit for them are you looking to just kind of go a conventional plastic ball sure maybe a starting on a, an entry level reactive fingertip mm -hmm. what are you looking for what's with that player it's 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 a lot like every customer that comes in i'm looking to see what are you going to do are you going to play an open bowling just go fun with your friends mm -hmm. then i'm going to do a conventional fit uh, i'm just going to keep it simple now if they're going to be let's say on a junior league or a high school team okay. which you can start as young as fifth grade these days you nice. can practice yep. with a team. I'll probably get them into a fingertip. Okay. The coaches want them started young. You know, I mean, you equate it to other sports, get them going early. That's you know, true. That's, if, so that's our philosophy. If your goal is to, uh, you know, advance in bowling, it's clearly getting into the fingertip uh, as soon as you can is probably the route to go. Is there an age that's too young for a fingertip uh, in your experience? Um, in my experience, I mean, I would at least say I'd like to see them get into third, fourth grade before a fingertip. Okay. Very good, very yes. good. And then as far as even on the younger uh, bowler, as far as uh, getting in the proper weight, um, is there a rule of thumb you go by with that? There's a couple of things that I look for. It's strength within mm -hmm. the bowler. I also look at uh, athletic ability. Okay. And I also ask them, you know, do you play other sports? Because that mm -hmm. comes into a lot of play. If they're athletically sound, then you can go a little heavier per se. But if they're really just getting into it and physically statured, not very good, we'll keep it lower. Very good advice. If you have any questions, feel free to stop by your local pro shop, run all this info by them, and uh, hopefully this will help, help your game.